All right, welcome back to Norn Tesla, back with another episode of Tesla 101. Now, today we are diving into Tesla's autopilot. Now, there's some terminology that people would really get confused with, so stick around because we are going to break it all down for you. So, when driving a Tesla, there are two types of driver assistant features you have autopilot as well as full self driving or FSD. The main differences between the two is that autopilot comes standard with every Tesla. So if you buy a Tesla, it automatically has autopilot included. While FSD is an add-on, you can either choose to purchase it or subscribe to it. And the other main difference is autopilot only works on highways as well as certain marked roads. If you have lanes, it should work. While FSD works everywhere. There's a lot more to it than that though. So let's get into the details because knowing and understanding these features can really change your driver experience. Diving a little deeper, it's actually a combination of features that make up autopilot. There's actually really no autopilot setting. What you have is traffic aware cruise control or TAC, as well as auto steer. Both of those together make up autopilot. So let's get into the differences. Traffic aware cruise control is essentially cruise control. It's uh, like it's cruise control on every other car, except it will slow down and adjust speed based on the car in front of you. Auto seater keeps you in your lane, even on winding roads, and it does a really good job of it, but it will not make left or right turns. For that, you'll need to upgrade to full self-driving, which is also tack and auto steer, but it adds the additional functionality of, like I said, making left or right turns and navigating stop signs and traffic lights, as well as navigating your route. So full self-driving also comes with auto park and apparently summon and smart summon, but that is really coming soon as it's been disabled with vision only cars since around 2023. So those are the differences. If you're curious about autopilot settings, stick around and while you're here, take a second and subscribe. Wondering how to activate these features? It's easier than you think, but there are a few things to know. Head over to the autopilot menu. Now, depending on what features you have on your car, you'll see different things. So at the top of the menu, you'll see your autopilot options. And depending on what you have activated in the car, it'll be your two, traffic air cruise control and auto steer, or three with the addition of full self-driving. So let's start off with the basic. First off, traffic aware cruise control. First setting you see here is traffic light and stop sign control. It will only be there if you have FSD. This will allow your car to stop at red lights and stop signs while using cruise control. So your next setting is set speed, which will have speed limit and current speed. Current speed is basically like any sort of cruise control these days where as soon as you turn it on, whatever speed you're going is the speed that's going to be set at. If you choose speed limit, your speed will default to the offset whether you choose a fixed or percentage based. You can always adjust it, but this is where it's going to start out as. So percentage would be like if you're going, uh, let's say if you add 10%, if you're going 50, it's going to go 55, if you go 120, it's going to go 132, so forth. And fixed is just the exact amount of kilometers you want to go over the speed that you have, or speed limit. All right, let's keep going down the menu. So moving down, we have a speed limit warning. Basically, this is going to give you a warning if you're going over the speed limit. Uh, you can either go display or chime. You can also set it to relative or absolute to give you a warning when you reach a certain speed above the speed limit. Uh, so then we have four collision warning, either having late, medium, early, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, lane departure warning. Basically, if you're going over your lane or you're drifting, this will either give you a warning or if you have assist on, it'll actually, the car will actually move the car for you and have a little assistance. And then all these other features, we have emergency lane departure avoidance, automatic emergency braking, obstacle wear acceleration, basically kind of limit your acceleration and maybe even apply the brakes if you have an obstacle detected in front of you while driving at low speeds. But you then have traffic aware cruise control chime, which honestly, I have no idea what it does. Green traffic light chime is when you are at an intersection, when the light turns green, it'll give you a little chime to remind you to go. So all these settings are on. I really don't know why you would have them off. I just leave them everything on for your safety. So going back up to the top, let's go over to auto steer beta. And obviously this is in the beta mode, so we're gonna have to have a bit of a warning on if we wanna continue. Uh, so moving on, we have autopilot activation. So one thing to note with the autopilot activation, with a choice of single or double pull, if you have only TAC enabled, then it makes no difference. But if you have auto steer enabled, if you choose single pull, then when you do that single pull, you'll automatically get autopilot. So you get both TAC and auto steer. However, if you at some points only want to have cruise control on, then you have to choose double pull because that's the only way to get it. So you do a single pull 
for attack and a double pull for full autopilot. And that same settings apply to full self-driving. So navigating on autopilot, again, there's a bit of a warning. And with this activated, once you put a route into your car, it will take you from on-ramp to off-ramp on the highway through lane changes, as well as if you're merging onto different highways, it will do all that for you. You have customized, you have customization options. Uh, basically, if you want to start at every trip, uh, speed, base lane changes. So uh, basically how crazy you want the car to go. Uh, average, if you want to be crazy, Mad Max. So uh, exit passing lane, uh, basically, I don't find the setting to be useful at all because uh, if you say yes, it's going to go, it's going to, you know, ping pong between lanes. Even if you say no, it's going to, I have it set on no and it still gets out of the lane all the time. So uh, not a good feature there. So with the required lane change confirmation, if you have that yes, you'll be required to acknowledge the fact that it wants to do a lane change. Uh, I believe it's a tug of the wheel. Uh, if you put no, that's fine. We are confirming that. Uh, and then you'll still get a change, lane change notification. Basically, the car is going to tell you uh, that it wants to make a lane change. You can either have it chime and vibrate, just vibrate, just chime, or off altogether. So moving on, traffic light and stop sign control. Same thing as we discussed earlier, as well as same with the set speed. All of things the same going forward. So full self-driving. If you have full self-driving, this is where you're going to activate it. Again, more warnings. The first thing you'll notice is that the autopilot activation tab is grayed out. So for some reason, I don't know when this happened, but you no longer have the option of a double pull when full self-driving is activated. From here, we have the full self-driving profile. So we have chill, average, and assertive. Now, this is basically the follow distance of your car, how uh, aggressive it's going to be, the follow distance. Uh, I usually have it at average. It's pretty safe and comfortable with that. Uh, same thing with lane change notification from before. Uh, you can either have it off or one of the combination of below. The next option is minimal lane changes for current drive. Now, if you turn that on, basically as it sounds, the car will make as little lane changes as possible. But when I use it or when I have it on, I really don't notice the difference from when it's off. And the annoying part is that you have to have it activated or turn it on every drive. If you want to turn it on, you got to come here or turn it on or go through your scroll wheel, which is annoying. But like I said, I don't notice the difference. Now, automatic set speed. Basically, if we have this on, again, this is beta, another warning. If you have this on, basically, the car is on auto speed. So the car is going to choose its speed based on the speed limit as well as the surrounding cars. So if the speed limit is 100 and all the other cars are going 120, then it's going to bump up the speed a bit. Uh, I've been using it. It's a, this is a new feature about a few months ago, and I've been using it. I find it really works well. Uh, again, with the speed limit warning, like I discussed before, as well as your offset, if you have that automatic set speed off. And again, all the other uh, driver assist features as well. All right, you got all that? Great. Now, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss videos, which I release about every week or so. Tons of awesome Tesla content like this Tesla 101 series, which is all about helping you learn all about your Tesla. Uh, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss stuff like that. Anyways, thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you next week, and drive safe and drive electric. All right, welcome back to our... All right, welcome back to another... All right, welcome back to Norton Tesla. Today... All right, well... All right, welcome back to Norton... There's a lot, there's a lot. Now the top, the top menu is what you have available. One thing to note with the autos. One thing to note with the autopilot.